The SEC boasts the best talent in college football, so that goes in line with the best talent also leaving to go to the NFL draft. Now, we just uh, cut a video post with a Dr. SEC, Peter Flournoy, on the best quarterbacks in the SEC coming back in 2014, and Pickens were slim on that one with McCarron and Manziel and the rest of them going off to the NFL. But when we talk running backs, and we're going to look at our top five running backs, we've got a lot to choose from here. So before I let Peter go on this one, I just want to talk about some of the guys that might be his honorable mention. They're definitely in my honorable mention category. We've got Jonathan Williams from Arkansas as a freshman. 900 yards, four touchdowns, six-yard average per carry. Jerron Seymour may get lost in the fray of all the SEC great talent at running back. Ran for 700-plus yards and 14 touchdowns. Uh, Kenyon Drake back at Alabama. So I guess I give it away right there. He's not in my top five, but he was number two on the depth chart most of the season there at Bama. Ran for 700 yards and seven and a half yards per carry. Uh, the reason I didn't like him for my top five uh, there had to be a good reason for him sitting on the sideline and on the bench uh, in the uh, Sugar Bowl against Oklahoma. He also didn't uh, carry the football much against uh, the bigger teams in the big games uh, last year for Alabama. Russell Hansbro and uh, also Marcus Murphy. So a pair of running backs, even with Josie leaving at Missouri, two more Missouri running backs who really contributed last year at six and 700 yards. Four and nine touchdowns. Murphy had nine touchdowns, six and a half yards per carry. So there's a ton of talent here that we're leaving off the top five. These guys would make it into the top five in a lot of conferences around the country. Corey Grant of Auburn, 9.8 yards per carry, 647 yards. Terrence McGee at LSU. They've been running by committee before Hill emerged as the, the back in the last couple of years. Uh, he ran for eight touchdowns and 7.3 per carry. Cameron Artis Payne who I believe uh, Peter's going to talk about a little bit, ran for 600 yards, 6.7 yards per carry. Uh, and the two backs at uh, Ole Miss that I'm impressed with, Jalen Walton and Itavius Mathers, had very nice seasons, along with, don't forget this guy, because the football team had a lousy season, but this may have set him up to have a huge year as a sophomore, and that's Kelvin Taylor out of Florida, who was one of the top recruits uh, going to Gainesville, uh, number one running back rated by most services uh, the previous season. 500 yards, and so he, he got his teeth into some SEC action last season and uh, responded at 4.6 yards per carry. All right, Peter, we're going to turn it over to you because, man, we've got so much talent to talk about here when we talk running backs in the SEC coming back uh, with just a few of the top guys like Hill and Mason uh, leaving last season. So what you got for us in the top five? Well, as you said, you know, the quarterback list was difficult because while there's so much talent, there's not a whole lot of experience the running back list is so difficult because not only is there a whole lot of talent, but there's a whole lot of experience and proven players. And so um, it, it's a very difficult list. As you said, it could look very different this time next year as far as how they perform. But I'm going to give you my most likely scenario. And at number five, I've got Auburn running back Cameron Artis Payne. I'd like to put a little asterisk right there if I could and put whoever the starting running back for Auburn is. And the reason I put them there is there are clearly guys that aren't on my list that if I was an NFL uh, GM that I would pick way before I would pick Cameron Artis Payne. The thing about it is I can't imagine that there's going to be a time under Gus Malzahn that we're not going to see a 1,000-yard rusher out of that backfield uh, from this point on. And, and I'm talking about outside of the quarterback position. And, you know, you look at a guy like Trey Mason. Trey Mason is a 1,300-yard running back anywhere. He's a guy that, in my opinion, in the Auburn system should have finished number two at least in the Heisman race, um, ahead of guys like A.J. McCarron and such. But I digress. I won't stay there long. But you've got to believe whoever the starting running back for Auburn is, is going to have a 1,000-yard season. Uh, last year, Cameron Artis Payne, um, you know, coming out of junior college, had 610 yards on 91 carries, six touchdowns, had a couple hundred-yard games. But the fact was they started running back by committee then Trey Mason became the man. And, I mean, had one of the – really one of the best seasons in, in SEC history. I'm not going to put it top ten, but it was one of the top 20 running back seasons in SEC history. I mean, just had an amazing season. What he did to Alabama, what he did uh, to Missouri, and even what he did to Florida State, even though they lost that game. So I've got Cameron Artis Payne, number five. Number four on my list, I'm going to go with a guy that has uh, came in last year at Arkansas – who I really, really like. And he's a guy 
that I could see being a Heisman finalist if one day, maybe even this year. The problem is Arkansas is not very good, and that is Alec Collins, uh, the freshman this past season, uh, sophomore this year, rushed for 1,026 yards as a true freshman, four touchdowns, 190 yard on 190 carries rather. He's a guy that's physical. He's a guy that's got speed as well. He is kind of, to me, he's kind of like Todd Gurley light. He's not quite Todd Gurley, but he is a heck of a running back, a guy that should be a five top five running back by the time he ends his career and should be, you know, you just uh, have a very successful career. And he's in a system that fits his skill set perfectly, and that's another thing you got to. I kind of look at when I'm doing this list. Number three, the guy I had number two on my list last year, and that is Alabama's T.J. Yeldon. Yeldon, in a lot of ways, you know, he's got – what they call nowadays Alabama running back syndrome, and that is no matter how good you are, everybody wants the next guy to take your spot. You know, first it was Kenyon Drake. Now it's Derrick Henry after the performance he had. And uh, both running back, all three running backs are going to be NFL running backs probably, you know, and have some success. But listen, this guy has now, you know, he's now rushed for over 1,100 yards in back-to-back -back seasons at 1,235 yards, 14 touchdowns, only at Alabama. There's 1,235 yards, 14 touchdowns, and, you know, the kind of success he had, six yards per carry. Only at Alabama does that have other guys or have the fans calling for the next guy to take your place, you know. Really, has, up, Peter. really has had a great year. And another thing about him as well, he's good out of the backfield catching the ball. You know, not great numbers, 183 yards this year, but he makes big plays when they matter, catching the ball out of the backfield. And I think we're going to see more of that this year, breaking in a new quarterback, than we have in the past, letting the letting the the him coming out of the backfield take some of that pressure off the running back, or excuse me, off the quarterback, uh, probably Coker, but whoever that might be. Number, excuse me, number two is a guy who I didn't believe in to start the year last year. He was a guy people were hyping up, people were saying was going to be good, and he was my guy that I admitted was the guy that I missed on the biggest last year, and that's South Carolina running back Mike Davis. Mike Davis was phenomenal last year. You're talking about 1,183 yards rushing, uh, 11 touchdowns, had an additional 352 yards receiving, and and we kind of saw kind of the potential of what he can do because he's a guy that if you shut down him in the running game, he can hurt you in the passing game. I think back to that Missouri game last year. He had 19 carries for 51 yards. His longest carry was seven yards. Every running back has a bad game. Every running back has a game where they load the box and you can't do anything. But in that game, he also had 10 catches for 99 yards. And he proved, you know, he's a guy that can do it in a, in a variety of ways. And he's a guy that, that I kind of doubted really coming out of high school. He's a guy that almost signed at Georgia, even though Keith Marshall and Todd Gurley had signed there. And, and he kind of seemed like he wanted to go to Georgia. But when those guys went there, he went to South Carolina. But, man, what a running back he's got. And then, of course, my number one guy is a guy that I think is the best, most complete running back in the SEC. I think he's the most complete running back in college football, and I think he's going to prove to be the most complete running back we've seen in the SEC in the last decade, and that is University of Georgia's Todd Gurley. And you're talking about a guy who played most of last year at 70 percent uh, best. He was a guy that was really hurting more, and a lot of people outside the program didn't know this. There were the thoughts that injury was worse than people let on, and there were thoughts that he may not be able to come back a couple games later but the condition they were in, they know he, they needed him, and he stepped up. Think about this. He was healthy against Clemson. He ran for 154 yards and two touchdowns. He was healthy against South Carolina, ran for 132 yards and a touchdown. He was healthy against North uh, Texas, but obviously they didn't use him as much, 91 yards uh, rushing. LSU, you know, that was the game, you know, against a, a, a decent LSU defense, you know, a very athletic LSU defense. The guy had 91 yards rushing two minutes into the second quarter, and it was that sprained ankle that slowed him down. But he came back, finished the year strong. You know, had 170 or excuse me, 187 yards total offense against Florida, uh, against you know Auburn. Had a had another you know 150 plus total yards game uh, against Georgia Tech. You know, had another 150 plus total yards game, and then of course against Nebraska, 86 yards rushing, 97 yards receiving. And what I love about him, and I don't want to take too long, Mark, but, but I've got to gush about this guy a little bit because he, he is the most complete back that I have seen since the Herschel Walker-Bo Jackson era. And I, I mean that because he is so physical. 
I mean, this guy will absolutely run you over. And then when he gets in the open field, he is fast. I mean, people forget this was a guy that was a junior U.S. Olympic track runner. This guy has a lot of speed when he bursts through there. He's a great blocker. I mean, it, go back. If you, do, if you appreciate complete running backs like I know you do, Mark, go back and watch the film of this guy blocking. I mean, he takes guys' heads off in pass protection, and that's going to be so valuable this year as the only thing George is replacing on offense or defense outside of uh, Aaron Murray is a few offensive of linemen. You know, they got 10 back, got all their receivers coming back, all their running backs coming back, but him being able to protect that uh, quarterback blocking and then coming out of the backfield. I mean, you you know, you seen what he did this year on a, on a bad ankle. You know, when he came out, as we talked about some of the games he had catching the ball out of the backfield, Todd Gurley is the best running back I have seen in over a decade. He is the most complete back. And if this guy doesn't get to the Heisman this year, I'm going to be shocked. If he's not in the top five, that means he's been injured or something's happened. And a lot of people will say he's got to stay healthy. He didn't stay healthy. Listen, he went through his freshman year running folks over. He was healthy. He just had a bad situation happen with a, with a, with a bad turn on, you know, when he got kind of pushed out of bounds there at the last second, kind of a fluke play. This guy is tough. He's the man. And Todd Gurley is the number one player in the SEC at any position. All right, Peter, since Bo Jackson and Herschel Walker. So when you started doing that, uh, when you threw out that reference and just started to gush about Todd Gurley, I tried to write yes, down sir. quickly as many good running backs as I could, great running backs, borderline great running backs in the SEC as I could think of in that time. And I, and I, people don't jump on me out there. I didn't think of everybody. I just started jotting down names. So Fred Taylor, Sean Alexander, the kid, uh, the guy, bro, it's been a long time, played for the Bengals, uh, number 21, uh, went to Auburn. I uh, can't think of his name. Ah, shoot. Anyway, excellent running back, uh, had great hands, caught a ton of balls in the NFL. Uh, Deuce McAllister, even though his teams weren't great at Ole Miss, obviously he was a first-round draft pick. Kevin Falk, we think of him with the Patriots. He wasn't that type of back at LSU. He was a complete back. Tim Worley, different sort of back, kind of an Eric Dickerson kind of build. Uh, Garrison Hurst, I, I just jotted down some guys to consider. But, uh, yeah, Todd Gurley's phenomenal. And, uh, yeah, I love your list, and I like what we're both doing the only here. Guy, because... the, only guy I'll say, the only guy I'll say that's come close that, that I think that, that could make an argument, uh, it's not a Trent Richardson. He, he was, you know, uh, he, he wasn't as good as Gurley. The one guy that I would say could to rival that is Darren McFadden. What he did at Arkansas was mighty, mighty impressive. Uh, but outside of him, I, I don't see anybody, and and I think he's better than complete wise. He's the most complete running back I've seen, and he's he was the best running back at the University of Georgia history, second best running back his second game outside of Herschel Walker, second <laughs> game I've never seen a guy better than Todd Gurley. Yeah, I made a big mistake apparently because I certainly heard about it, Peter. So last season we went through all the positions here on Mark Rogers TV. We went through the top ten nationally, top ten players at each position coming back. And uh, you're probably going to kill me for this, but I went uh, Gurley 3, Kadeem Carey out of Arizona 2, and Yeldon 1, and people just laid me to waste. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Gurley's a freak. Yeldon's a very nice back. Gurley's a freak. I basically uh, just just looked at the productivity at that point and was, was uh, kind of projecting uh, yelled in to have a better season, not necessarily be the better back. So in a way, I was yeah. doing what you're doing right here, and that's what what uh, makes the list interesting is you can look at this different ways, and you've done a nice job of taking the talent, and you're basically judging it strictly on talent, but you're also on those close calls taking into consideration the personnel around the player, whether their style fits the system, and who's going to be more productive this season. Uh, obviously, you can't put three Alabama running backs necessarily in the top five if you're looking at productivity because there's only one football. So uh, that interesting list there. I love the analysis on Gurley and the uh, the the insight. That's why we have you on here, Peter. There's uh, my list coming in here, one through five, and now we'll talk about these guys. So I've also have Todd Gurley at number one, as you can see right there, but going five through one, I'm going to do something that uh, you're not doing because of the one football <laughs> theory, and that's I like Derrick Henry coming off of the Sugar Bowl game, eight carries, 100 yards against Oklahoma. He was almost untackable. 
if that's a word, in the second half against Oklahoma. And the, the thing that I've got going here, yes, I don't think he's going to produce the yardage of a top five running back in the SEC, but I think uh, based on the reputation, uh, the pub coming out of high school, and he's supposed to be that great of a back, the power, the speed, he's got it all working for him. Yeah, he only had like 40 carries last year, but uh, he really ripped it up at 10.6 yards per carry. And again, the Sugar Bowl performance was amazing. So I think in limited amount of playing time, we're still going to see that he's a top five running back in the SEC. So I got, I'm going Derrick Henry in his sophomore season at number five uh, in the conference. Alex Collins, like you, I love him at number four out of Arkansas. It's just a freshman. You mentioned it, 1,000 yards uh, because of the limitations in the passing game. Teams loaded up the box against Arkansas, and he was still able to find running room and just drive the ball down the field uh, with sheer brute strength and, and, and quickness. And uh, against good defenses, if you look at his yards per carry, I looked at the game log against good SEC defenses. Even though they had to throw the football in the second half because they were behind, he still was was running for five and five and a half yards per carry against top defenses with no passing threat, meaning the worst passing uh, offense in the SEC. And number three, you made some great points on Mike Davis, a guy that isn't necessarily going to wow you with his talent necessarily, uh, but man, he just produces. Uh, 700 yard games last season against uh, some quality defenses, most notably Georgia and Mississippi State, Central Florida, North Carolina. Uh, I think you mentioned it here uh, specifically. Probably the most important game for South Carolina last year was that comeback they had in the fourth quarter on the road at Mizzou, and he caught for 100 yards there. He had 34 receptions on the season to complement, again, the 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns. Uh, number two, I got TJ Yeldon, and uh, you brought up a great point. I've got a Bama guy that comes on here on a regular basis, and he makes uh, the same statement about uh, the next guy in line and his backup. It's 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 quarterback at most places, but for some reason at, yeah. at Alabama, it's running back. It's like, eh, you only threw up a buck fifty for us this week. Uh, this this uh, this uh, top recruit who we haven't seen yet. It's a five star, and man, we'd like to see him run with the football. So T.J. Yeldon getting a bit overlooked for a guy that is just. Imp- impressed everyone and just run for big yardage in big games. Again, coming down the stretch last year when Alabama needed it, a uh, tie game against LSU in the third quarter, ran for a buck 33. The Mississippi State game, they were not throwing the ball against that Mississippi State defense. He ran for a buck 60 and then a buck 41 against uh, Auburn to close out the regular season. And you mentioned him possibly being a, more of a factor in the passing game coming up this season. If uh, Tide fans remember, and I'm sure they do, uh, maybe the most important play of the Alabama National Championship season in 2012 was the swing pass to T.J. Yeldon to beat LSU in Baton Rouge. Otherwise, uh, Bama probably loses that game. And number one, can I say anything to add on to your Todd Gurley spiel? That was uh, a thing of beauty. So, yeah, you, you got to toss aside the stats. He missed three full games. He was never the same once he tweaked that ankle, and just for him to be out there. Um, I kind of lost interest a little bit in Georgia. There were just so many other things going on, and they had already lost four football games that um, after I saw them play Clemson in Missouri, South Carolina, again, they kind of fell off the radar. I didn't catch back up with uh, Todd Gurley and company until the bowl game against Nebraska, and he wasn't anything close to 100%. He was just a gamer out there uh, slugging away and ran for like 90 yards on a bad ankle. But uh, he'll get healthy, and he will be back at it. And you mentioned the LSU game, the game he got hurt. He was tearing up the Tigers in the second quarter. And uh, he caught, um, man, I don't know if this is this past season. I think it is. He had 37 receptions and caught six touchdown passes. Mm -hmm. Uh, So your your deal about a complete back, uh, that stat wraps it up right there. Yeah, absolutely. You you talk about the job he did, you know, late in the season because Keith Marshall was out. Another guy got to look to see how he comes back because you know this was a guy that just he he really he's so big, strong now. I mean, people didn't really get to see him because he got hurt so early in the season, but he's put on a lot of muscle and he's uh, he's obviously still blazing fast. But with him out and and everybody stacking the box because Georgia was down. Listen, they lost four guys who at one point in the season were their number one receiver. Um, so they were just stacking the box against them. But, you know, you look at, at what he did. 
against you know Florida, 87 yards receiving against Auburn, 77 yards receiving against Auburn, 90 yards receiving against Nebraska, net 97 yards receiving. I mean, those are really good wide receiver numbers, you know. And uh, he was doing that uh, last season. He he's going to be fantastic, man. Watch this guy. I feel he's one of those guys you look back, and I, I mean this with all sincerity. He's the guy that you feel honored to have covered his career because he is a guy that is so fantastic on the field, such a, a amazing person off the field, and it really would have changed at Georgia because they went through a stretch. People want to talk about the struggles they had over the years. Richard Samuel, Caleb King, Sean Ely, those were featured backs. Now with a guy like Todd Gurley, guy like Keith Marshall, now two of the top five running backs in the country coming in, Mark Rick surely has, uh, has made up for the running back issues they had. But you talk about one guy, if you don't mind, T.J. Yeldon, you know who he reminds me of, Mark? He reminds me so much of Noshon Marino uh, when he was at Georgia. And I'll tell you why. He's much more physical between the tackles than people realize. People think he's just kind of a finesse kind because of, he's so good and so quick and so athletic. Uh, but he's more physical between the tackles. But he doesn't have that traditional run-you-over Alabama every play running back under Nick Saban feel to him. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking at. Henry's got that. But one thing I'll say about Henry is he better start running the ball lower because if he gets SEC amount of carries and he runs it as high as he runs it right now, he's going to have a hard time finishing the year. But you're right, man. It, it, the rich always get richer at Alabama at the running back position. Well, you can see why we have the doctor, Dr. SEC Peter Flournoy, on our show because I'm a guy, I'm a college football guy that tries to cover everything and look at everything. And obviously you have to keep an eye maybe one eye on the rest of the country and one eye on the SEC if you really want to do it right. Uh, but to bring in the real in-depth knowledge of the personnel in the SEC, Peter, I love the insight, appreciate the information, uh, the in-depth knowledge, and uh, the perspective on the SEC. I could talk this all day and would love to have you on any time to break down uh, the best uh, players at each position. Hey, I love, I love coming on the show, Mark. You've got a wonderful thing going. Good stuff, Peter. We will catch you next time. And for anybody out there that wants to catch up with your radio show, whether they're in the areas where they can uh, actually catch the radio show or maybe uh, be able to uh, find it online, what do they need to do? Uh, the best way is we're, we're redoing the uh, website right now, getting it ready. But there is a, uh, there's a radio link down there that says Waiting Room. And uh, that's the name of our, our main show, The Waiting Room with Dr. SEC. also have a sh uh, show called RDT on Bama Sports Radio. But they'll be able to click on that link, and they can go and uh, Spreaker.com. We're going through there to try to get, get some of the stuff put on iHeartRadio as well. So just go to drscc.org and click on the radio link, and they can follow the show there. So if you love college football and specifically the SEC, again, you, you can watch the national media. You can see a lot of stuff, and it's a lot of um, – they, they just don't have the opportunity. They've got to they gotta please everyone, so it's very surfacy. If you want in-depth insight into the SEC, again, into coaching changes, personnel changes, uh, recruiting, and National Signing Day coming up, uh, catch Dr. SEC uh, at his website right there. Peter, thanks so much again. Hey, thanks for having me again, Mark.